Hey everybody, how's it going? Superfiend here, and I wanted to share my impressions with you of Total War Three Kingdoms from the time I spent playing it in Early Access. Overall, I'm very pleased with the game and agree with others that it could possibly be one of the best titles in the series. I think Creative Assembly has been listening to and aggregating fan criticism since the release of Rome 2 and made a considerable effort to address those criticisms. I'll talk about a few things briefly and then go into some longer sections with a little bit more detail. In a lot of ways, Three Kingdoms feels like Shogun 2 has been merged with campaign mechanics like provinces, sacking and raising cities, army caps, and character equipment. Provinces feel more like single city settlements connected to resource nodes, and resource nodes don't feel like minor settlements at all. You can upgrade them, but you can't build walls. And even though you can't build walls, they don't feel entirely helpless. Hard army caps are still present, but I never felt restricted by them. You can split your armies apart to handle multiple threats, but you will be somewhat limited a little bit by the retinue system. Splitting an army doesn't arbitrarily punish you financially because supply lines are now a per army resource that must be managed instead of some arbitrary global debuff. Character equipment is essentially a carryover from the Warhammer titles, and even though I was playing records mode, it didn't feel out of place. In fact, it's somewhat necessary to boost the satisfaction of your characters by equipping them with gear. Diplomacy is probably the best it's ever been, at least since and including Shogun 2. There's a lot more trade and diplomatic options present, and with the new indicators, there's very little guesswork in figuring out just what the AI will accept. The quick deal and make this work features are welcome additions, and if Creative Assembly doesn't keep them in the franchise forever, then I say we riot. There doesn't appear to be any agents, and characters seem to play a vital role by acting as generals, participating in your family tree or government positions, or administering individual cities. I didn't have time to play with the spy network, so I don't have any comments there. In general, the feeling I get is that arbitrary mechanics have been replaced by more meaningful systems. systems. Instead of arbitrary provincial commandments, you administer settlements with characters. Instead of a ridiculous financial penalty for supply lines, you have to manage supplies for each individual army, and it doesn't affect upkeep of any other force. You won't take attrition during winter in enemy territory if you have sufficient military supplies, but those supplies will deplete faster. You may not be able to lay siege long enough to starve a settlement into surrender, if you don't have the supplies. The combination of weather and military supplies opens up some new strategy. An army largely composed of missile units and cavalry may have an advantage attacking during winter as light infantry suffer a 25% movement speed penalty in snow. Replenishment is a lot slower, but can be affected by characters, buildings, or city population. New features such as capturing enemy generals, feel right at home and appropriate, and I think a lot of players will appreciate some of the details in the battle maps. And I want to call special attention to chasing down enemy troops that are fleeing the battlefield. I know that it's been in all recent titles, but Shogun 2 was the last time it really felt effective and impactful. Those are some of my quick thoughts on Three Kingdoms, and if you want to keep watching, I have some additional sections that I spent a little more time editing. I find the overall atmosphere to be fantastic and immersive. The soundtrack, art direction, and campaign map are all amazing and often combined in a way where you realize five minutes has gone by and you've just been absorbing it instead of playing the game. Certain design decisions within the user interface enhance the atmosphere in ways that are so subtle you may not even really notice them for a while. The title screen is a map of China that drifts across the screen even when you're dancing about within the various menus. Banners behind characters wave during faction selection, while examining your faction overview, and during diplomatic endeavors. Various panels and character sheets are filled with a foggy mist, and legendary characters are denoted by this mystical orb. The tech tree is represented as a literal tree branch that first grows and then blossoms as it opens. That may be a little more obvious, but it's still pretty slick. It's a user interface that is static and informative when it needs to be, but active and fluid without becoming obtrusive. Present on the campaign map are seasons, trade routes, fauna, 
and weather effects. With the day-night cycle enabled, towns, cities, and various landmarks light up during the evening, and resource centers are populated by laborers that carry their goods between areas of interest. Finally, towns and cities are, at least a little bit, populated by citizens, and city walls are even garrisoned by itty-bitty troop models. On the topics of stability and performance, I think the game is in good shape. Bear in mind, I can only tell you how the game ran for me personally, and based on my background in computer programming and years of PC gaming, I can make educated guesses as to how it may run for you. When in doubt, use Google and YouTube search to find benchmarks that are most comparable to your specific hardware. The game is fairly stable. My early access copy did crash twice on me the first day I had it, but then never again in the days after. Occasionally during loading screens, I'll receive a Windows pop-up that the game is not responding, and if I choose to wait, then the game comes back and everything works fine. Three Kingdoms performs well enough. My system was top of the line when I built it around two years ago. I have an Intel i7-7700K, a GTX 1080 Ti with 11 gigabytes of video RAM, 16 gigabytes of system RAM, and a solid state drive that uses the NVMe2 interface. At 1440p with extreme unit sizes, no anti-aliasing, and running in a full screen window, the battle benchmark clocks in at an average 65 frames per second, with dips into the 40s as the carnage ensues. If I were to make a comparison, I'd say it's similar to large battles in Warhammer 2. I would assume, and the keyword here is assume, that if you can run Warhammer 2, you'll be able to run Three Kingdoms. If you play at 1440p, you may have to give up either extreme unit sizes or anti-aliasing to get closer to 60 frames per second. At 1080p, ultra unit sizes and anti-aliasing turned on. I had a constant 60 frames per second in battle benchmark, enabling anti-aliasing, extreme unit sizes, extreme shadows, SSAO and screen space reflection did give me dips down into the 40s at 1080p. As I said earlier, the user interface is informative, but it may also be one of the most icon-heavy interfaces I've ever seen. There's a helpful overlay feature activated with F1 or clicking an icon in the upper right corner of the screen. However, even with this feature, it was hard to find some basic information. It took me three hours to find the settlement garrison button. I didn't realize you can instantly build, upgrade, or demolish a building by paying a lump sum until after 12 hours. And after 30 hours, I finally realized character cards in the character panel have a slight outdent to indicate generals within the same army. Creative Assembly has taken a very subtle approach to conveying information, and within this icon-heavy interface, it's really easy to miss a particular icon within a sea of icons. An analogy would be spending five minutes looking for bread in the pantry that's directly in front of your face. Some icons are only visible under certain contexts, and it can be easy to miss when new icons have become present in the UI. Essentially, everything is well organized, but it takes some time to learn when, where, and under what conditions certain information is available or certain actions can be performed. At times it can become frustrating because certain information seems to be completely absent and I can't tell if it's just because I'm an idiot that can't find it or if it's truly not in the game. And here are some examples. Character attributes have a maximum value of 200, but the bar fills up at 100. Essentially, the bar fills up twice, and from comments on my YouTube videos, I've learned after an attribute reaches 100, the character is a legendary character, but I have no idea what this means, and I can't find anything in the UI that tells me. Certain units are unlocked via technologies, and there's nothing new there. What seems to be new is I can't hover my mouse over the unit cards to inspect them. When multiple technologies unlock units, how am I supposed to choose which one to research if I can't inspect or understand the results? Maybe I can look at the unique units of my character, so let's try that. I don't even see them listed. Oh well, let's just recruit some troops.
And here they are. So you tell me, what am I missing here? I would like Creative Assembly to address this at some point by giving us an in-game troop browser, similar to the building browser. I want to be able to inspect in detail units before I research them. I want to know which of these attributes, titles, traits, and personality disorders that the characters have affect which units can be recruited. And when I say in-game, I do mean in-game. I do not want an online encyclopedia like we had in Rome 2. Another aspect of the interface I'd like to address is the unit card organization and battles. I think this is going to be a real make or break area for some players. I think the biggest change is the inability to drag and drop the cards regardless of which option you use for unit card sorting. The only way to change where unit cards appear in the battle UI is with numbered groups. This may be one of the hardest changes to adapt to, but having pushed through the initial hurdle, I think it's for the better. Unit cards are always exactly where they should be. When I first started Total War, I used control groups, but eventually gave up on them as units get dropped from groups when they break and later rally. These days, I prefer to drag and drop units on the card into a loose organization, but for some reason they're always changing position and jumping around. It's especially problematic in Warhammer 2. Essentially, previous titles for me have been plagued with unit cards that never quite stay consistent in their position. And as a legendary difficulty player that can't pause the battle to sort my cards, it's been a significant pain in my side. And that's no longer a problem in Three Kingdoms, but it comes with some initial frustration during your first battles as you get used to not being able to move the cards. One improvement CA could make to the unit cards in battles would be to separate the UI for reinforcing armies. Essentially, if there are three armies in the battle, two of which are reinforcements, then I'd like to see three separate panels for the unit cards in battle. If, for example, one of your reinforcing armies has fire arrows, then during the heat of battle, it can be difficult to locate them. However, if that reinforcing army's unit cards weren't lumped in together with your primary force, it would be easier to find those units. The user interface is where most of my criticisms for the game lie. And as I wrap this section up, I would like to point out that just because I criticized it, doesn't mean I don't like it. And it also doesn't mean I think the game is bad. I don't think either of those things. The issues I've brought up are specific items I think could or may change over the life of the game. But even if they don't, the game is still quite enjoyable. And that's really all I have time to put together for this video. I hope it helps you decide if Three Kingdoms is the right Total War for you. If you do pick up and play the game, I hope that you enjoy it. If you don't buy it on release, I think you definitely will not be disappointed if you pick it up later um, on, on a future sale. I do wish Creative Assembly all the success um, possible with a release of a title like this. And once again, do thank them for my early access. I really did enjoy it. Outside of that, feel free to check out the rest of the channel. You can follow me on Twitter if you desire to do so. And thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you next time. You have a good afternoon and take care.